Hey everybody, week five. We are to week five already. You are almost through this. Week five is about sleep and mobility. I'll spend more time on the sleep section and we're gonna jump right into that. So everybody knows uh, what it's like when they have a bad night of sleep and the next day is just oof, right? But too many people have that time and time again and sleep is like the best thing for our body right um, if you're not getting sleep it doesn't matter how clean you eat it doesn't matter what supplements you take you need to get good night's sleep that is your best supplement all right so a uh, couple things there's going to be i'm going to talk about how to uh, help to get to sleep and help stay in asleep um, more on the getting to sleep staying asleep is something that's um, just there's there's so many outlying factors that it's hard to uh, pinpoint um, things that may or may not help that. So first off, getting to sleep. We have already introduced one tool to use to help get to sleep and that is the journaling that you have been doing. So um, we talked about doing this the night before when we first introduced it and then we told you guys that if you need to, lay out your priorities the night before and save the rest for the morning. This isn't meant to get your brain to uh, let go of everything that you have to think about, not to think about all those things more and more often. So the idea, again, write up every all your priorities for the next day, your to-do list, whatever it might be, and it's there. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to go, oh man, did I, did I forget about this? No, it's written down. And when you read it the next morning, your memory will be jogged and you will be able to pick up where you left off or think of those random little things oh yeah i can't forget to pick up milk whatever it might be anyways okay keep journaling uh, fill the rest of the sheet out in the morning what you're thankful for rating your day stuff like that okay all right the next thing your room needs to be dark i'm talking like pitch black cave dark cover every single light the light on the tv the lights on the alarm clock the lights on your phone the light from the hallway like especially your windows, that's part of your homework this week is to post a picture of how much light's coming in during the day. Hint, shouldn't be that much, okay? Um, so, make it black. And I understand if you have kids and stuff, like they sometimes need to come in and see where you're going, right? Like, there's certain things that we're just not gonna be able to do. But if you can, make it as black as possible or at least wear an eye mask. I have two or three of them, it's not silly, okay? Next. Keep your room cool. Should be plenty easy to do in Minnesota, all right? Um, keep yourself cool, get a heavy blanket, a down blanket, whatever it might be, and let that kind of compress you, wrap up in a little cocoon, you'll be good to go. Now, I know you're thinking, like, geez, well, I'm this temperature and my significant other is a different temperature. Yup, you guys have figured out, um, I use two different blankets. Simple as that, okay? Lighter one for the uh, warm sleeper, more for the cold sleeper, okay? Um, but make it cool should help you sleep. Um, one other thing, get a fan, all right? And we're not talking about a ceiling fan, though those work, but I haven't seen too many that don't squeak at some point. Um, but have a fan that you can turn on. I have a cool one with a remote, it's awesome, whatever. Um, white noise, it blocks out a lot of the other creaks and moans and groans the house makes and the dog's collar and all that sort of stuff, right? Um, it just helps block a little bit of that out and and uh, helps you go to sleep, right? Um, other things that they make are like dream machines. There's apps to play a fan noise on your phone. Um, there's, um, you can play music, nature sounds. I've played Pandora before and like let that play and you set a sleep timer, you're good to go, okay? So get something for the white noise. Next, blue light. One of the very first habit things uh, that people go over is no phone or TV 30 minutes prior to going to bed. And I'm a terrible person, terrible advocate of this, um, but 30 minutes. Use that time to journal, use that time to read, use that time to decompress and shut off, okay? So I've even seen people wear, uh, remember the old school blue blockers or those orange tinted sunglasses? Okay, that will at least help keep that blue light out and keep your brain from being wide awake, okay? Other things to help you get to sleep. There's something called the four, seven, eight breathing method. That is four seconds inhale, hold for seven, eight seconds exhale. And the idea, it's kind of like a new version of counting sleep, but the idea is that that will slow your heart rate down and you just keep going through the cycle over and over again until you just magically sleep and you wake up and don't know how it happened. So um, 
the one experience that I have heard about is people do not like holding their breath. And if that's the case, just do the four and the eight and eliminate that part in the middle. Just count up, inhale, count down, exhale, whatever it might be, and go over and over again. And yes, it's gonna take some practice um, and it might not work for everybody, but in general, um, it's a really good tool to, to kind of help uh, you focus on the counting and shut your brain off to everything else. So, um, that is the help getting to sleep. Um, we're not gonna talk anything, there's supplements and stuff, right? There's plenty of sleep aids, stay away from most of those, especially um, melatonin's the one that comes up the most. Your body creates melatonin. Um, and the theory is that if you start taking it, your body will stop making it. Um, I haven't done enough research or studies on that, but there's other better ways um, to to go to bed. Something like taking a magnesium tea uh, before you go to bed will help just as much if not more than melatonin, okay? So staying asleep. Uh, first thing, the bed itself. There's a one minute rule. Lay down, get comfortable. If you cannot stay in that position for at least a minute, you're probably gonna need a new mattress. And if you just got a new mattress and you already don't like it, well, sorry, <laughs> but you gotta be, you gotta find something that's gonna work for you for a really long time, right? This stuff is super important, important okay? Um, again, on the staying asleep portion, um, you know, there's, there's, there's so many little things, but if you black it out and make it cool, well that, when you flip over in the middle of the night and your eyes wake up, um, there's no lights for your brain to see and then therefore register and wake up a little bit, okay? So, other apps to help you sleep. Everybody's got smartwatches or whoops or Fitbits or whatever. They're all really great and really all they do is they track if you're moving or not. Um, there's one, if you don't have a fancy watch, um, there's something just called Sleep Cycle. It's free, download it on your phone, you put it under your pillow, and again, it tracks movement. If it, it's not 100% accurate, but it will tell you like if you're tossing and turning all night long, you might not even know it. Okay, so download and start using one of those. Um, I don't know if that's required per your homework. I should have written that down, but use an app and see what it's telling you, and then you can adjust from there, okay? All right, that's all I got on sleep. As far as mobility, there's four different pieces I'm gonna talk about quick, all right? Warm up, static holds, uh, smashing or rolling out, and activation, okay? So, um, warm up's not meant to affect your mobility. It's just supposed to loosen up the muscles and joints to get them to you know, work through their range of motion a little bit better. So that's something a little bit different. Um, smashing, going out of order, smashing is like manual massage, um, breaking up scar tissue and stuff. Also is not going to fix your mobility. I'll get to that in a second, but can help on the days where, you know, like I have really bad shoulder mobility. So I do some smashing work just to get everything to, to get back into its proper position, whether I'm like over tight or beat up from the day before or whatever it might be. Um, and it just loosens me back up so that everything's going where it's supposed to be going, okay? Um, but activation and static holds are what can really actually help your mobility, okay? Static holds are simple. After a workout, hold a position for two minutes. So if I have terrible, like I have terrible shoulder mobility in my arm, should be able to go straight up and down there. So when I get done with a heavy shoulder day, I should do like the puppy dog stretch or hang off the rig or something for two minutes, okay? That's the key number, two minutes is where your brain finally um, recognizes that that range of motion is okay, all right? That you can actually, like your shoulders should be moving there and doesn't freak out and hold it too tight to keep it safe, okay? I'm. Uh, condensing a lot down into a tiny little bit here but um, anyways the idea is that if you ever get injured your brain is going to shut off and not let your arm move that way because it thinks it's going to get hurt so the static holds tell it otherwise simple as that activation okay this is something you would do before class part of warm-ups and things like that but that might be if my shoulder, we'll go back to my shoulder example, is I'm gonna do a lot to get those muscles to fire properly, okay? Simple one for me with bad overhead mobility is I go up against the wall, back up against the wall, put my hands up and try to press up, keeping my hands back as far as I can. I'm trying to simply get those muscles to work properly, 
okay? So um, there's a whole host of different things you can do to get muscles to activate, but even doing simple stuff, like if we're doing overhead pressing and you do overhead presses with PVC, that's activation work, okay? Um, there's a lot more that we, we could dive into on that front, but for your homework this week, you just have to build your own static stretching at home mobility wad, okay? And it explains how to do that, but I'm just gonna leave you with that. So, um, mobility is huge, cool downs after a workout is huge, and hold those positions for two minutes. Cool? All right, everybody, that's week five. Keep it up, you guys have been doing great. Thanks again for all the why statements, those are awesome, and we love reading those. Uh, can't wait to help you guys with even more goals in the future. So that's all I got. Have a great day.